Hey guys, how's it going? Today's your boy, let's go be Jones. And today, we're gonna have a little different video. I get this question asked all the time, and it's how am I learning Korean? So, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Okay, you guys, I've been living in Korea for about six years now, and my Korean journey's been a little weird, but I'm gonna help you guys learn some Korean. There's a lot of ways you can learn Korean. You can learn on your own. You can use websites. You can come to Ohakdang, which is language school, and I've done all of it. But I'm going to teach you guys how to learn Korean on your own at home. And the majority of the ways I've done it is through like websites, books, and private tutors. So without further ado, let's get it. Okay, you guys. So like I said, I learned Korean with a lot of books, and. Uh, I have a lot of books right here. This, will, this is a music theory book, but that doesn't count. So, uh, the amount of Korean books that I have. One. One stack of books I have that I've studied to use Korean. Here's another random book. Another stack of books I've used. Here's some more books that I have used to study Korean. I'm going to tell you what you need to do to learn Korean through books. Okay. First thing, everybody knows the website Talk To Me In Korean, okay? That's a good website. It gives you a good foundation. So definitely Talk To Me In Korean, check them out. They have the books that you can pay for from the bookstore. You know, they have their all their levels. They have their special books. They have a lot of good audio stuff. So if you want to do like a general basic course that's going to teach you from like A to B to get you decent enough, I definitely recommend Talk To Me In Korean. I am using their podcast services right now, the um, Iyagis to do their intermediate listening. So that's what I do for my listening. I also watch YouTube videos and movies, but that's how I really work on my listening. For a level one person, talk to me in Korean is great. For a high level person, their podcasts are great for listening. But one really good book that I recommend is the Korean Grammar in Use series, okay? This is an amazing series. This is the beginner. They have beginner, intermediate, which I also have. I need to get their advanced book also, but it's a really good book because it teaches you a couple grammar points, gives you a couple example sentences, and then there's a little worksheet thing that you can do. I recommend this book, but I don't recommend starting with this book or series because you kind of got to know how to read Hangul and kind of need to know a little bit of stuff. So if you go to something like Talk To Me In Korean or some other websites that I'm going to recommend, this is a good supplementary book to go with. Uh, there's just a lot of books, okay, you guys? And it's difficult to recommend just one certain book. A lot of the language schools, the Ohakdangs, which is like the universities, Yonsei, Seoul, Korea, Seogang, Kongguk, there's so many schools that you can go to attend Korean classes, they all have their own book. I, I have attended Seogang. I have attended uh, Seoul University or Seoul Shrikte. They use Seoul University. There's the active Korean book. I have the Kongguk book somewhere around here also. All those books are great. If you're going to go to language school, it doesn't really matter what school you go to. Just get a book, get a series, and just work with it. It's going to help you. Dang, I have a lot of books. Um, so that's just for books. Pick any book that you want to get, okay? Sogang, Yonsei, um, Korean University, all the books are good. Right now, I'm personally using the Yonsei Ilgi books, the Yonsei reading books, to work on my reading ability. So I decided to start from level one with the Yonsei. So I'm higher than that, but I'm just using level one, then level two, then level three, then four, all the way to six. I'm going to reread and re study all of those books to practice my writing skills and my reading skills and to learn vocabulary. Because I learned on my own, my vocabulary is missing in some parts. I know 90% of this level, 90% of this, so I'm using those books. For also reading material, I also recommend this book, uh, Korean Stories for Language Learners. I'll leave a link of it in the description. Um, I really like this book because it starts off very simple with very basic stories. Obviously, you need to know Korean grammar, like a basic amount of Korean grammar to understand this book. Basic, level one, level two grammar. But the good thing about this book, it has the book in English and Korean. So there's a story, one side's in English, one side's in Korean. 
understand it. There's new words. They have it in English and Korean on the next page. And there's pre-reading questions, cultural notes, comprehension questions, and writing activity. So as an example, this book's going to say, if you read the title, what do you think the title means? Then it's going to show you the words, the new vocabulary. Then there's going to be questions you answer. Why did the tiger eat the monkey? How did the monkey get away? And then there's going to be a writing practice for you to do which is going to be like, if you were a monkey, how would you get away from a tiger? Writing practices. I also recommend this book, this series, it's kind of expensive. There's like a hundred books or 10 bucks a piece, but it's another good book for stories, for reading practice. Um, there's a bunch of other websites and podcasts that you can use. For websites, uh, there's so many. The best ways to find grammar questions, it's like, if you didn't know what koshikta means in Korean. That means want. But let's say you didn't know what that means. You read a sentence and it says mokoshikta. I want to eat, but you don't know what that means. You know what mokta means to eat, but you don't know the koshikta. What I would personally do is go to Google, type in koshikta grammar, and there's a bunch of websites. There's like five of them that I always go to. How to study Korean. That's an amazing site. I'm using that site right now. I'm restudying everything from one to seven um, just because it's a really good website. It goes in so much detail. I would say it goes in more detail than Talk To Me In Korean. I prefer that website over Talk To Me In Korean personally because it goes in more detail, but it could be like information overload. You can have too much information, but yeah, it's a really good website. The person who created it, they even gave you a vocabulary list and you can use that vocabulary list to learn your own vocab words. Other good websites are like, if you search the Ko Shipta, there's a bunch of other websites. There's this website, I'll just post them here, like one, two, three, four. All these websites are good just to get a quick grammar explanation. You. I don't know this grammar, you look it up, they'll show you some example sentences how to use it, they'll show you some examples in English and Korean, and now you know how to use it. Podcast, there's some really good podcasts that I'm using, like I said, the Talk To Me in Korean, Yagi. There's another podcast called Sponge Mind. It has a, a Western guy and a Korean guy, and they just talk about topics. The, the Western guy, he was learning Korean, so the way he decided to advance his Korean was by doing this podcast. So they'll do a podcast in English and a podcast in Korean. So you can hear both. And sometimes they do have a transcript. It's really good for listening practice. Another good podcast that I would recommend is Hangugo Kon Endok for beginners, and there's like a regular one. This person, she speaks really slow in these, and she's really simple. Like if you're level one Korean, Igup, Igup, definitely listen to her podcast first because it's really slow and she asks us basic questions like, what is your name? But different ways to say what's your name and has like a little dialogue with you and then describing the weather. It's kind of slow, but it's really, really good. Um, I listened to that recently. These days, learning Korean is all about review. Another good thing to use is an SRS program, Space Repetition System. Pretty much those are a flashcard program and you 100% need those. Like Memorize, Anki, Quizlet, it doesn't matter which one you use, they're all the same. The one that I use personally is Anki because it's kind of like the oldest one. But it has a lot of optimization in it. So you can just go to Anki and download a shared deck and you could download a Seoul University level three deck and it automatically start learning those words. Technically, you're supposed to make your own decks. As an example, you put the word in Korean and then you put the word in English and maybe put a picture. But personally, one of the best ways I'd say to learn vocabulary is through sentences, sentence mining. Find sentences and then learn the sentences. By learning the sentences, you will learn grammar and vocabulary like naturally. Sometimes it's really hard just to learn a random word in Korea. As an example, suda, suda. It means to use, it means to write, and it means to wear a hat. Suda. If you just wrote that word in your SRS program, you wouldn't know which of the three. But then if you had sentences with that, it's much better. So as an example, Mojaru Suda or Mojaru Soyo, I wore a hat or Pyonjuru Soyo, I wrote a letter or I don't know, I'm using my phone, but there's like five words for you. So like Iyong Hada, Sayong Hada, Suda. So is it Kyudefon, Handophone, Suda, Handophone, Sayong Hada? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. My just, I'm, I'm going on a tangent. Anyway, definitely recommend the SRS program. Like make friends and obviously is another way to make to learn Korean. There's a bunch of apps you can use, HelloTalk, Meef, 
Tinder. I don't know. You can technically use all those to make Korean friends and to pra practice speaking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, definitely make friends to practice your speaking. Speaking is the hardest thing to get up. My biggest problem is I'm really good at reading and I'm okay at listening, but I'm meh at talking. So one of the biggest things I did was get a private tutor to help me. So there's really two big private tutoring programs to learn Korean. One is italki, but my problem with italki is I like that there's professional and the community teachers and they all vary in prices, which is good. So you can pick who you think is best. The problem that I have with italki is that you don't know what they're teaching. Yeah, they have like a, a, a practice lesson, like a 30 minute lesson you can, but each teacher is different. There's no set curriculum. You get what you pay for. Even though you pay a lot, doesn't mean you're gonna get quality. I like italki, and if I was learning any other languages, definitely I would be on there. But I think there's uh, alternatives for Korean. And uh, one program, one website I would really recommend is Say, um, saySpeaking.com. Disclaimer, I technically have worked with this company. This is not sponsored, but I gotta say that because I don't want people to say, well, you, you did an ad for them. My friend is the co-founder of this company. When he made this company, <laughs> to me, when they first made it, it was expensive. And I was like, this was too expensive for me at that time. So I went to italki. Later on, as their program built, they got more teachers and things like that, their prices went down. I had some friends that told me, like, hey, my Korean really improved by using this program, so I gave it a go. And I loved it. The cool thing about this program is they use like uh, elderly people, older people that they were retired teachers and they teach you Korean. But I really like this program. Since I've been using this program, my Korean speaking has increased tenfold. And one thing I really like about this program is that they have a set curriculum, right? They have levels one through six and they have business. I'm currently doing the business in level six. So level six is kind of like news articles, but um, they teach you from level one. And it's like a one hour class and it's just one-on-one -on -one learning. The problem that I have with ohatans and stuff like that in group lessons is the teacher's gotta teach 10, 15 people at once. You're not getting that focus time. You might be in Korean class at Ohatang for four hours and you might only speak 30 minutes. Corona online classes do play a problem in that, but you, you speak like 30 minutes in those four hours. With this one hour program for say, you're speaking 50 minutes the entire time. I'm always speaking. My teacher, he corrects me here and there, but I really love the program. All the teachers are great. There's a nice curriculum. And like for me, my Korean really improved. Like I haven't talked about this on the channel. I haven't made a video about it, but technically I had my own TV program in Korea. So in 2020, I had my own, I had my own television program, like real television program, like it broadcast on TV. Um, we did two seasons. Last year's season was in English and it was good. We started, Corona happened, and then we started again and we finished that season. Season two started and they said, hey, we're switching all to Korean. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. So I literally grinded out the level four program before I started my um, season two. And I was taking classes three times a week I think I grinded it out in like two months or something like that. I was, I was just going every day like pretty much to learn this stuff. Once we started filming, my PD the first day was like, your Korean really improved. And I was like, really? My Korean was still trash, you know? Like, I, okay, my Korean wasn't trash, but <clears throat> my Korean isn't that bad. Okay, how about this, you guys? If you guys want me to make a video in Korean, leave a comment below on what kind of video you want me to make in Korean, and I'll do it. I just hate subtitling and it takes so long, <laughs> but it's okay. My Korean really did improve using this program and then as we kept filming, I kept doing lessons and my Korean went up more. So like the first episode of season two, I was really nervous, but then by the time we finished the last episode, I was really comfortable speaking. Sadly, because of Corona, we had to cut season two short, but you guys can watch it on YouTube because they uploaded to YouTube also. Yeah guys, that's just a little story of how I'm learning Korean. My goals right now is to actually get topic four at least topic four by the end of the year. So I guess the first topic exam of 2022, I'm gonna take and hopefully get topic four. So I'm grinding out and doing those things. I'm gonna make a video talking about how I'm doing that later. But yeah, you guys, this is how I recommend learning Korean. Use websites, there's a lot of free resources. You will learn grammar, um, you can learn vocabulary from that. When you learn grammar, when you learn vocabulary, make sentences and put them into Anki. So that it goes into your long-term memory. Definitely get a grammar book. 100% listen to podcasts when you're walking, when you're running, when you're, when you're going to the gym. 100% all the time listen to Korean. You can even change your phone to Korean if you're really that advanced. 
adventurous or your computer, but you should always be listening to something Korean. Um, just, just AJAT, but I guess ACAP. All Korean all the time on um, books, podcasts, SRS, and if you have the money, get a private tutor. I also have a private tutor for offline. So I have an online private tutor and I have an offline private tutor. So I do different things at both. But yeah, those are the things that I recommend. Anyways, you guys, if you guys like this type of video, make sure you guys like and comment below and tell me what kind of videos you guys want me to make next. And like always, fighting.